In the last video, we saw how a matrix and figuring out its inverse can be used to solve a system of equations, and we did a two by two. And in the future, we'll do three by threes. We won't do four by fours because those take too long. But you'll see it applies to kind of an n by n matrix, and that is probably the application of matrices that you learn if you learn this in your algebra two class or, or your algebra one class. Um, and and you often wonder, well, why even do the whole matrix thing? Now I will show you another application of matrices that actually you'll, you're more likely to see in your linear algebra class when you take it in college. Uh, but, but the really neat thing here is to show, th I think this will really hit the point home, that uh, the matrix representation is just one way of representing multiple types of problems. And what's really cool is that if different problems can be represented the same way, it kind of tells you that the same problem. That's called an isomorphism in math, that if, if you can reduce one problem into another problem, then all of the work you did with one of them applies to the other. But anyway, let, let's, so let's figure out a new way that matrix, matrices can be used. So I'm going to draw some vectors. Let's say I have the vector. Let's call this vector A. Let's say I have vector A. And it equals, and I'm going to just write this as a column vector. And you know, all of this, this is just convention. These are just human invented things. I could have written this diagonally. I could have written this however. But if I say vector A is 3, comma, negative 6, not comma, but you know, 3, negative 6. And I view this as the x component of the vector, and this is equal to the y component of the vector. And then I have vector b. Vector b. Vector b is equal to. Vector b I have is equal to. Let's maybe make sure I get this two, comma six. And I want to know. I want to know. Is there some combinations of vector a and b where you know I could say you know I don't know five times vector a plus three times vector b or ten times vector a minus six times vector b some combination of vector a and b where I can get vector c where I I can get vector c and vector c is the vector is the vector seven six. So let me see if I can visually draw this problem. So let me draw the coordinate axes. Let's see, this one, 3, comma, negative 6, that'll be in coordinate. These are both in the first coordinate, so I just want to figure out what I, how much I need to, how much of the axes I need to draw. So let's see. So if this is the y, let me do a different color. Or do a different color. That's my y axis. I'm not doing, drawing the second or third quadrants because I don't think our vectors show up there. And then this is. This is the x-axis. Let me draw each of these vectors. So first I'll do vector a. Vector a, that's 3 comma negative 6. So 1, 2, 3, and then negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's there. So if I wanted to draw it as a vector. Visually, start at the origin. And it doesn't have to start at the origin like that. I'm just choosing to. You can, you can move around a vector. It just has to have the same orientation and the same magnitude. Right, so that is vector a. That's vector a for the green. Now let me do in magenta. I'll do vector b. That is 2 comma 6. 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 2 comma 6. So 2 comma 6 is right over there. And that's vector b. Vector b. And so it'll look like this. That's vector b. And let me do vector, write down vector a down there. That's vector a. And I want to take some combination of vectors a and b and add them up and get vector c. So what does vector c look like? It's 7, 6. Let me do that in purple. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 6. So 7, 6 is right over there. That's vector c. 
vector C is, looks like that. A vector C. Maybe, oh, yeah, I want to draw it like that. And that's vector C. So what is the original problem I said? I said I want to add some multiple of vector A to some multiple of vector B and get vector C. And I want to see what those multiples are. So let's say the multiple that I multiply times vector A is x, and the multiple of vector B is y. So I essentially want to say that, let me do it in another neutral color, that vector A x, right? that's how much of vector A I'm contributing plus vector b, y, that's how much of vector b I'm contributing, is equal to vector c. And you know maybe I can't. Maybe there's no combinations of vector a and b when you add them together equal vector c. But let's see if we can solve this. So how do we solve? So let's, let's expand out vectors a and b. Vector a is what? 3 comma negative 6. So this is vector a. We could write as 3 minus 6 times x, right? That just tells us how much vector a we're contributing, plus vector b, which is two comma six, which is two comma six, and then y is how much of vector b we're contributing, and that is equal to seven comma six vector c. Now this right here, this problem can be rewritten just based on how we've defined matrix multiplication, et cetera, et cetera, as this, as 3 minus 6, 2, 6 times x, y is equal to 7, 6. Now, how does that work out? Well, think about how matrix multiplication works out. The, the way we learned matrix multiplication, we said, oh, you know, three, three times, three times x plus two times y is equal to seven, right? Three times x plus two times y is equal to seven. That's how we learn matrix multiplication. But that's the same thing here. Three times x plus 2 times y is going to be equal to 7, right? These x and y here are just scalar numbers, right? So 3 times x plus 2 times y is equal to 7. And then matrix multiplication here, minus 6 times x plus 6 times y is equal to 6. That's just traditional matrix multiplication that we learned several videos ago. But that's the same thing here. Minus 6x plus 6y is equal to 6. These are just, these x's and y's are just numbers. They're just scalar numbers. They're not vectors or anything. So we just, we would just multiply them times both of these numbers. So hopefully you see that this problem is the exact same thing as this problem. And you've maybe had an aha moment now if you've watched the previous video. Because this matrix, this matrix also represented the problem. Well, how, where do we find the intersection of two lines, where the two lines, and I'm just going to do it on the side here, you know. The intersection of the two lines, 3x plus 2y is equal to 7, and minus 6 x plus 6y is equal to 6. And so you know, I had drawn two lines, and we said, oh, what's the point of intersection, et cetera, et cetera. And it was represented by this problem. But here we have, well, I won't say a completely different problem, because we're learning they're actually very similar. But here I'm doing a problem of I'm trying to find what combination of the matrices A and B add up to the matrix C. But it got reduced to the same matrix representation. And so we can solve this the same exact way we solved this problem. If we call this the matrix A, let's figure out A inverse. So we get A inverse. Let me say A inverse is equal to what? It equals 1 over the determinant of A. The determinant of A is 3 times 6, 18 minus, minus 12. So that's 18 plus 12, which is 1 over 30. And we did this in the previous video. You swap these two numbers, so you get 6 and 3. And then you make these two negative, so you get 6 and minus 2. That's a inverse. And now to solve for x and y, we can multiply both sides of this equation by a inverse. If you multiply a inverse times a, it can't this cancels out, so you get you get x comma y is equal to a inverse times this. So it's equal to one over thirty times six minus two six three times seven six. 
And remember, with matrices, the order that you multiply matters. So on this side, we multiplied A inverse on this side of the equation. So we have to do A inverse on the left side on this side of this equation. So that's why I did it here. If we did it the other way, all bets are off. So what does this equal? This is equal to 1 over 30 times, and we did this in the previous problem. 6 times 7 is 42, minus 12, 30. 6 times 7, 42, plus 18, 60. So that equals 1, 2. So what does this tell us? This tells us that if we have 1 times vector a plus 2 times vector b, right? 1 times, this is 1, and 2 times vector b. So 1 times vector a plus 2 times vector b is equal to vector c. And let's confirm that visually. So 1 times vector a, well, that's vector a right there. So if we add two vector b's to it, we should get vector c. So let's see if we can do that. So if we just shift vector b over this way, we'll vector b. Let's see, vector b is over 2 and up 6. So over 2 and up 6 would get us there. So one vector b, just doing heads to tail visual method of adding vectors, would get us there, right? 1, 2, 3, OK. I think, no, let me see. It's a, let me see, 1, 2, 3. And then vector b it goes over 2 more. Two more, and then so it, it'll get us an up six. So it's like that. So that's one vector b. And then if we add another, but we want two times vector b, right? We essentially we have we need two vector b. So we add one, and then we add another one. I think visually you see that it does actually. Well, I didn't want to do it like that. I wanted to use the line tool, so it looks neat. So you add another vector b, and there you have it. That's a vector b. So it's 2 times vector b. So it's the same direction as vector b, but it's 2 times the length. So we visually showed it. We, we, we solved it algebraically. But the real learning and the big real discovery of this whole video is to show you that this matrix, this, the matrix representation can represent multiple different problems. This was a, uh, uh, you know, finding the combinations of vector problem. And in the previous one, it was figure out if two lines can intersect. But, but what it tells you something is that these two problems are connected in some deep way. That you know, if we take the veneer of reality, that underlying it, they are the same thing. And you know, frankly, that that's why math is so interesting because. When you realize that two problems are really the same thing, it takes all of the superficial human veneer away from things. Because you know our brains are kind of wired to perceive the world in a certain way. But it tells us that there's some fundamental truth independent of our perception that, that is tying all of these different concepts together. But anyway, I don't want to get all mystical on you. But if, if you do see the mysticism in math, all the better. But hopefully you found that uh, pretty interesting. And actually, I know I'm going over time, but I think this is kind of, uh, you know, a lot of people, they take linear algebra, they learn how to do all of the things, and they say, well, what was the whole point of this? But th th this is kind of an interesting thing to, to, to think about. You know, we had this matrix A, we have this, uh, we, sorry, we have this vector A and we had this vector B. And we were able to say, well, there's some combinations of the vectors A and B that when we added up, we got vector C, right? So an interesting question is, what are all the vectors that I could that I could get to by adding combinations of vectors a and b, or adding or subtracting. Or, or you could say, you know, I could multiply them by negative numbers. But either way, what are all of the vectors that I can get by taking uh, linear combinations of vectors a and b? And that's actually called the vector space uh, spanned by the vectors a and b. And we'll, we'll do the more of that in, in, in linear algebra. And here we're dealing with a two-dimensional Euclidean space. We could have had three-dimensional vectors. We could have had n-dimensional vectors. So it, it gets really, really, really abstract. But this is, I think, a really good um, toe dipping for, for linear algebra as well. Well, hopefully I haven't confused or overwhelmed you. And I will see you. In